Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about fetal biometry and growth. This is the first video in this video series with title of Fetal Biometry Part 4, mainly about fetal weight estimation. In video part 2, it was explained about technical points in fetal biometric measurements. In video part 3, it was explained how to assign gestational age in the second and third trimesters according to these measurements. Now, in this video part 4, it will be explained how we must estimate fetal weight and weight percentiles. So, the outline of this presentation include introduction, complete explanation about models for estimation of fetal weight, and final teaching points. Fetal weight is estimated using a formula based on fetal measurements. Accurate determination of fetal weight is important for planning optimal pregnancy follow-up and the timing and mode of delivery for both small and large for gestational age fetuses. According to many studies, clinical assessment of fetal weight is useful and quite accurate. Nevertheless, sonographic fetal weight estimation has become common practice. The fetal weight percentile is used to assess whether or not the fetus is growing appropriately. Appropriate weight percentiles are those between 10 and 90 percentiles for gestational age. An estimated fetal weight below the 10 percentile is concerning for an abnormally small fetus which may be due to fetal growth restriction. An infant with a birth weight below the 10th percentile is termed small for gestational age and above the 90 percentile is termed large for gestational age. Now, complete explanation about models for estimation of fetal weight. Many models have been developed that use single or combined fetal measurements, mainly the fetal abdominal circumference by parietal diameter, head circumference, and femoral length. According to many studies, there is still no consensus as to which model yields the best sonographic fetal weight estimation, although some models report insignificant systemic errors, random errors usually exceed 7%. On the other hand, estimations made close to the delivery might be influenced by other parameters such as oligohydraminous or engagement of the fetal head in the delivery process. But in contrast, some references believe that the accuracy of fetal weight estimates is not affected by maternal body mass index or fetal sex, nor it's affected by oligohydraminous or polyhydraminous. Fetal weight estimation is less accurate in diabetic mother than in non-diabetic mothers, and less accurate in very small fetuses, that is, those weighting less than 1000 gram. According to many studies, adding other measurements to the head, abdomen, and femur, such as the thigh circumference or thickness of thigh soft tissue or three-dimensional volume calculations, does not improve accuracy of weight estimation. This 3D ultrasound image was taken by multi-planar mode and orthogonal planes technique. The position of sensors are positioned on the ends of femoral diaphysis. Automatically, the computer identifies the middle diaphysis and marks five equidistant points along 50% of the femoral length. At the level of each of these points, the tie surface is manually delineated in the axial plane. At the end of the process, the computer calculates the fractional limb volume. But recent research 
like as this paper was published in 2017 about fractional fetal tie volume in the prediction of normal and abnormal fetal growth during the third trimester of pregnancy, conclude that 3D tie volume on its own is equivalent or better to 2D biometry for detecting small for gestational age and fetal growth restriction at 34 to 36 weeks gestation, but it's not a general acceptance. Despite considerable improvements in sonographic equipment, the accuracy of estimating fetal weight has not changed since the development of formulas three decades ago. This paper was published as 2012 for assessment of the accuracy of multiple sonographic fetal weight estimation formulas, and it was a retrospective cohort study during 10 years. The primary aim of this study was to assess the accuracy of 23 sonographic fetal weight estimation models in predicting birth weight based on measurements made within a week of delivery. The secondary aim was to determine the most accurate time between 4 to 7 or 3 days before delivery for evaluating fetal weight. The finding of this study showed that models 21 and 22 by Sabaha, which incorporate gestational age into the equation, were the most accurate in their study. It seems that no single model consistently predicts fetal weight accurately. The estimation calculated from most models predict within 10% of birth weight only in 65% of the time. For most models, 80% of sonographic fetal weight estimations predicts within plus and minus 50% of birth weights. Some models had a tendency to overestimate fetal weight, whereas others tended to underestimate it. These results were statistically significant and allow better understanding of the specific formulas used by different institutions. Also, they found greater accuracy for models that use three or more fetal biometrics, including femoral lengths, abdominal circumference by parietal diameter and head circumference. They found that the timing of sonographic fetal weight estimation affects the accuracy of the estimation. For most models assessed fetal weight estimations performed 4 to 7 days before a delivery were more accurate than those performed 3 days or less before delivery. This finding was apparently not due to measurements of the fetal head which could have been engaged in the pelvis, as it was also true in models that did not use fetal head measurements but may have been due to a difficulty in obtaining accurate fetal measurements so close to delivery. As you can see in this clip, it was very difficult to obtain an accurate abdominal circumference plane for this fetus. Only three models showed improved accuracy when estimation were performed zero to three days before delivery, include Jordan model, Wu model, and Sabaha. According to some reliable references, Hadlock formulas have been tested by multiple authors, although attempts have been made to improve fetal weight prediction with other formulas, none of them has been developed that outperforms the Hadlock formulas consistently and across all types of patient populations. Selecting the most appropriate table is important for making sure the weight percentiles apply to the population being scanned, because babies are born larger than they were several decades ago, newer tables such as that published by Alexander and Associates in 1991 are likely better than older ones, but it's specific to American babies and cannot be generalized. 
according to many studies estimating fetal weight for gestational age via weight percentile is best performed in the later part of the second trimester and during the third trimester. Prior to this time, estimation is less accurate. Fetal interval growth from one ultrasound scan to the next can be estimated to make sure the fetus is growing weight at an appropriate rate. Because of the 95% confidence of fetal weight estimation has a wide range of plus and minus 15% assessment of fetal growth between two sonograms should be performed after an interval of at least 7 days. Normal fetuses grow fairly steadily from 30 to 40 weeks gestation at a rate of approximately 220 grams per week. After 40 weeks, the growth rate declines. Despite considerable formulas designed for singletons can also be used for estimating weight in twin gestations because formulas developed specifically for twins are no more accurate than those developed for singletons. The intra-observer and inter-observer variability is high for fetal weight estimation. Higher quality scans result in more accurate weight estimation. Thus, attempts should be made to minimize this variability by arranging several measurements of each body part using careful measurement techniques like that points explained in video part 2 and optimizing image quality such that anatomic landmarks are clearly visible. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Different sonographic fetal weight estimation models present a wide range of results. Knowledge of the characteristics of and distinctions between sonographic fetal weight estimation models is important for their proper clinical use and interpretation. It's recommended that each center should examine and choose the most accurate model for its portrayant population. Models based on three or more fetal biometric indices show more accuracy in predicting birth weights. For 19 of the 23 models, fetal weight estimates is more accurate when calculated 4 to 7 days before delivery than within 3 days of delivery. Despite considerable formulas designed for singletons can also be used for estimating weight in twin gestations, because formulas developed specifically for twins are no more accurate than those developed for singletons. Another way to assess fetal interval growth is to compare the weight percentiles from one sonogram to the next. If the weight percentiles for gestational age are similar from one examination to the next, the fetal growth is likely to be normal. If, however, the weight percentile falls considerably between two examinations, concern should be raised that the fetus is not growing appropriately. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.